Hi, we are at Chasers right now, and the wait list is longer than the list of reasons why Margot Robbie will not date me. It's horrible. We've been here for like an hour and a half. Maybe we've moved up five names. That would be optimistic. The sun went all the way down. The moon came all the way up. Still not sitting at a poker table. That's fuck. It is 24 hours later. It's now Saturday afternoon. I haven't played poker in damn near 36 hours. I'm salivating in the mouth to sit at a poker table. I feel like a dog in a pound just being punished for a long ass list that I can't control. Long winded explanation to say that we are at Boston Billiards. Let's go play some poker. Please God. Shut up. head inside and get seated at Boston Billiards 2-5. Let's play some poker, finally. The literal first hand that I'm dealt, we look down at Ace Jack of Diamonds. Button straddle is on, big blind limps, middle position limps, then the hijack limps. I have two cards in great position. I'm going to raise. I elect on a sizing of $75. Only the big blind and hijack make the call. We go three ways to a flop, no wasting time. It comes a seven, five, two hearts and a diamond. Big blind checks. I'm thinking the hijack's gonna check, play and flow. I can see bet, one of them calls, we go to a turn. No, none of that. Boston Billiards does it way different. The hijack just open rips it. All in jam from the hijack for $250. Um, okay, that's interesting. I'm never folding. First hand, 30 seconds in, we're going all in. Heads up to a run out. Turn comes another diamond, and the river is an offsuit too. That seems like a pretty damn good run out. Maybe the hijack has hearts. Straight. Get straight. Or maybe he can have four three of diamonds for a gut shot straight draw and a backdoor flush draw, which by the way is absolutely dead because we have the ace high diamond draw. Yeah, what a riveting start to the session. I'm gonna bash my head into a wall. We're off to a hot start. I immediately add on chips, which is never a great sign. We move on to the next hand. Two minutes later, we're under the gun and look down at Ace King suited. I raise it up to $20. The cutoff button and small blind make the call. Then the same player from last hand raises it up to $110 with around 700 behind. Well, since I've seen him play 4-3 suited, I'm not going to flat here ever. I decide to put in a 4-bet to $375. Action folds back to the big blind, who jams it all in for around 7-something. All in. Let's try this again. <laughs> I snap call. Five minutes into this session, we're all in twice. Let there please be a better run out this time. Flop comes ace king. This seems great for us. Run out brings two ducks. My three pairs are no good. The big blind has pocket kings. Case king on the flop. Just a tease. I think I'm good. No shot. Never had a chance. Drawing slimmer than an anorexic chick. I don't know if I want to use that joke, but it's get over it. We're all adults. It's funny. Not really. I'm dusting my bankroll. This sucks. By this point, the chip runner had just brought me more chips, and we created this little jingle. It's a really fun one. I say, chips, and one of the guys comes over and delivers me chips. It's this really cool process. This is the third time that I've done it within five minutes. Two singular minutes later, we have ace five of clubs on the button. No shortage of action early on. Very much shortage of money. I would be perfectly fine if those two were flipped. Nonetheless, there's a limp to me, and the cutoff raises to $20. Could flat, but I'm in position, and I'd rather take this hand heads up. I raise to $60, and everyone folds! Let's f***ing go! We win a hand! Next, we have ace nine of clubs under the gun. There's a button straddle, the big blind limps. I raise it up to $40. Under the gun, plus one, cutoff, and big blind all make the call. We go multi-ways to a flop, which comes seven, six, two, no club, no pair, no dreams, no hope. Action checks to the cutoff, 
who bets $275. My god, I'm not a rocket scientist, but I have a hunch that this guy has something strong. <laughs> we all fold, could not fold faster. Here we have Ace-7 of hearts in the cutoff. Low jack limps, and I decide to limp. If someone raises on the button or blinds, I can comfortably call and play a smaller pot in position, rather than if I raise, face a 3-bet, now I'm playing a bloated pot with an ace that could be dominated, makes it much harder to navigate, I don't know. Those are the reasons why I decide to limp this hand, and the big blind and straddle also limp as well. Once again, going four ways to a flop, this time it looks a bit better. Jack 8-4 with two hearts and a diamond. The low jack, the same player who wrecked my soul in both all-ins, decides to lead for $40. That is a price that I'm willing to call. We stick the money in the middle. Everyone else folds, going heads up to a turn, which comes no help to us, and it pairs the board. Just about the worst thing that you can ask for. This time, the low jack bets $65. Normally, I'm opposed to chasing flushes on paired boards, because if they have a boat, then you just get destroyed. But realistically, pocket fours just became a lot less likely, and the only other two hands that he can have are pocket jacks and pocket eights. Both of those I would expect him to raise preflop. I think more realistically, we're facing one pair that is just trying to extract value from draws. Anyway, and this is the guy who played 4-3. I'm not over that hand. We need revenge. I'm making the call. We go off to a river, which once again brings zero f***ing help. However, we have an opportunity to bluff as the low jack checks it over to us. That is an opportunity I'm not willing to take because we block all of the hands that we want the low jack to have. Not a great situation. I decide to check it back and thank God we did because the low jack shows 5-4 suited. He let out for a pot size bet with bottom pair on the flop four ways, but it's no problem because he knew he was just gonna turn trip. It's really an easy game for him. It's, it's not a problem. The next shuffle, 15 seconds later, we have King-10 offsuit in the hijack. I raise it up to $20, and both of the blinds make the call. Flop comes 10-5-4 rainbow. Looks pretty good to me. So when action checks to me, I'm going to put in a continuation bet. I throw in $40. Then the small blind check raises to 90. What is going on today? The weird thing about this board is there aren't really many bluffs that the small blind can have. Maybe 6-7? Maybe 7-8? Other than that, what is he really bluffing with here? In the moment, I felt like this was a protection raise. A lot of middling strength hands that want protection against random overcards that are c-betting. He's like, yo, bro, I know you have ace-king, fold that shit, let me take this pot. That's the vibe I got from this raise. So, with that in mind, I decide to make the call. We go heads up to a turn, which comes an 8. Not a great card, because 10-8 now improves the 2-pair. Pocket 8s makes a set. We lose to more stuff. And 6-7, the main thing that he could have been check-raising with, also gets there. The small blind continues betting for $115. Here is where I should let it go. For that reason, I make the call. What do you want from me? This day's been going great. Let's add to the fire. Going to one last card, which comes a nine. <laughs> now, we lose to everything imaginable. What are we beating here? The small blind finally slows down and checks. I have a hand. I don't really think I can turn it into a bluff. And I have enough showdown value. I'm going to check this back. The small blind flips over ace-10 offsuit. Nice. We lose another pot, and yeah, nice. We've been sitting at this table for no longer than 40 minutes, and we're in the game for $2,500. When you have a favorite album and you re-listen to songs, 
that's kind of what I'm doing here. I'm just reloading chips, and the chip runner comes back. We do the little jingle again where he's like, chips! And I'm like, yo, here's Benjamin Franklin, word! Yeah, that was really lame. That was a lame reenactment. Sorry about that. Kind of cringe. You know what else is cringe? Dusting off your bankroll to luck boxes and nits. Alrighty. After our third reload, let's see if luck can turn our way. We have 6-4 of hearts in the big blind. The cutoff raises to $15. I think you can mix in 3-betting here. Might be a little loose. Plus, I'm out of position, so I'd rather play smaller pots. I just decided to make the call. Flop comes a7-5 with two diamonds and a club. I check, cutoff bets $15, and I make the call. Turn is a king of clubs. Introducing two flush draws, which we have neither. I mean, I just want to realize my equity. I want to see a river card, hope it's a three or eight. Can we please do it, poker gods, for the one time? I check, and this time, the cutoff checks it back. We go off to a river card, which comes the nine of clubs. We are sitting here with six high. Uh, what are we doing? Backdoor clubs get there, and eight six also gets there. We have a six blocking those hands. We could credibly have eight six. If I had a straight, what would I do here? Realistically, I'd probably bet pot or maybe 1.5x pot, but I decide to check. Yeah. The cutoff bets $25. That seems really weak. Since we can't win with value hands, let's try to win with bluffs, gentlemen. We throw in $150 and get snap called. Could not get beaten to the pot quicker. Cutoff shows A7 offsuit, flop two pair, no problem whatsoever. This game is amazing. We love poker. We do the whole chips jingle thing again, add 200 more dollars. This is our fourth add-on within 35 minutes. We are in great spirits. Here we have king-queen offsuit under the gun plus one. There's a button straddle on. I raised up to $30 and the button makes the call. Flop comes ace-10-5 with two spades. This is a flop that is generally much better for my range than the buttons. Plus, we can turn the Stone Cold Nutter Butters with any jack, and we can barrel on any spades, considering the Ace of Spades is out there, plus we hold the Queen of Spades. There are a lot of turn cards where we can apply a lot more pressure. With that being said, I start off with a bet of $20, and the button makes the call. Turn changes things. It comes the King of Clubs. Hmm. Well, I turn Showdown value, don't really feel like I need to turn this hand into a bluff anymore. I slow down and check. The cutoff decides to check it back. River peels off the ten of spades. Once again, we have showdown value. I decide to check. And the button checks it back and flips over ace-nine offsuit. Yet another pot not going our way. That seems to be the motto of the day. That was some Dr. Sue shit, and I am proud of it. Let's move on to the next hand. A few hands later, we pick up pocket sixes in the small blind. There's a straddle on, and I raise it up to $30. Both the big blind and straddle are fold, so I think I'm taking down the blinds. Then the cutoff calls. I didn't even see him in this pot. That kind of sucks. I would have made it $40. I'm going to be honest, in the moment, I was actually pretty annoyed because I didn't even see the cutoff in the hand. It's such a small thing, but this was kind of like the whole uh, feather that broke the camel's back situation. I was not having a good time at this point. Flop comes out, king, jack, whatever. Action checks to the river, the cutoff throws out a bet, and I fold. I think I've won a singular pot all day, and I took it down pre-flop for $25. What is going on? Believe it or not, but this is the last hand of the session. I hope that's not foreshadowing. Let's see what happens. Straddle is on. There's a limper in middle position. The cutoff raises it up to $40. We look down at pocket jacks in the button. That's a great hand. I'm going to 3-bet. I raise it up to $155. Then my friend in the small blind puts in the cold 4-bet to $450. <sighs>
action folds to me, and this is ace king at worst. But I leveled myself into entitlement tilt. I was like, I can't be running this bad this frequently. And I leveled myself into jamming. Small blind snap calls, and that's my friend Emmett, so thanks, buddy. We ran out the board twice, because he is a good person. I'm trying to think of an analogy for something that is no help or of zero utility. The only thing I can think of is, I don't know, maybe pocket jacks on an all low card board versus pocket queens. Dust. No help. See ya. On to board number two. Queen in the window. See ya later. Two ladies wasn't enough. They introduced the third one to the mix and had quite the fiery threesome with my money. If this were real life, spending money on three ladies would be probably a hell of a story. In this case, we just muck our cards and go home crying. Oh, you think it ends here? Absolutely not, my friend. We took an hour off, got more money, and I was like, you know what? I feel like I'm gonna go play poker. This is definitely a good thing for me. I headed over to Chasers, got drunk and dusted off 2,000 more dollars. Total loss of $4,700 in a singular day. So that was my biggest loss ever. Let's talk about it. It's the day after, the afternoon after, and I've had some time to sit and reflect, as the philosophers may say. I talked to my friend last night, and I repeated maybe four or five times, dude, I lost $4,700. I kept bringing it up. Like, I, my brain couldn't process it. I, I, I don't know. It's a lot of money to me. The biggest, the second biggest loss I've ever had is $3,000. So this is quite a uh, margin above that. I need to play better. I could have lost $850 less on the pocket jacks hand. Didn't have to punt $2,000 at chasers. Don't play PLO. I feel like that's a good start. In hindsight, it's behind us and we can't do anything about it. I had a great night. Justin and I went to Encore at around one in the morning and I ended up getting a girl's number. Definitely gonna be pursuing that. I think I'm gonna take a day off or two. Maybe just like allow myself some time to get in the right headspace and not try to force hands and force everything to come back all at once. Thank you for coming along this journey with me. We're gonna look back on this someday with my largest win ever. My largest win will be 10, 20, 50,000. We'll, uh, we'll be Mariano's brother in the profit department in the years to come. That's gonna be really cool when I start playing like 25, 50, and I look back on this and be like, yeah, I, you lost 4,700 a day. Yeah, I just lost that in a pot. Nice, nice hand. <laughs> so that's, that's stuff to look forward to. But like I said, till next time, Thank you so much for watching. Please leave a like and subscribe. Peace.